Hello, I'm Karri Huhtanen, I'm Managing Director of Radiator Software, and today I'm going to talk to you about our Enterprise Wi-Fi Authentication as a Service, Radiator Outdoor T5. Uh, Radiator Outdoor T5 is a radio-based Wi-Fi authentication service uh, for authenticating network users and guests. The service provides a radio-based user authentication mainly for Wi-Fi, but that can be also used for wire 802.1x and even radio-based VPN authentication. We don't in that sense limit the kind of uh, uh, use cases for this service. We have just designed it mainly to be a Wi-Fi authentication service that is using the radius protocol. That's why the, uh, this kind of entry requirement of, for utilizing this service is a radius capable Wi-Fi controller and access points. There is no new hardware needed for this service. You can already utilize your enterprise level VPA2, VPA3 uh, uh, compatible access points and Wi-Fi hardware. And in essence, your company Wi-Fi network. Radiator out fi uh, provides you the radius servers there, but can also be integrated with your own radius servers if you want some additional control, for example, for uh, checking what kind of information your controllers are sending, sending to our service and possibly, for example, filtering that information there. This is a subscription-based service. It's delivered uh, from the Google Cloud. We are uh, adding regional service endpoints as we are kind of uh, expanding this service and based on, of course, for the, for, on the customer demand. Radiator Outdoor is designed to work with radius roaming federations such as EduRoam, GoRoam, Open Roaming. And optional add-ons for this service includes client certificate authentication, as well as self-service guest access solution uh, with roaming, roaming federation integrations. Uh, we designed this service keeping in mind certain kind of use cases that are common for comp companies and organizations providing this VPA2, VPA2 enter price Wi-Fi networks. The first thing were the employees, contractors, and the regular users of organization Wi-Fi. We wanted to make it easy for any of these kind of employees or regular users or contractors them to get a uh, Wi-Fi user account and password, which they can then use to access this kind of VPA2, VPA3 secured network. In addition to that, we also thought about the organization guest Wi-Fi users, those kind of users that don't need this kind of regular network access. Instead, they need the network access only for a day or an hour or a few days there, but not that kind of thing that uh, they would be kind of uh, doing a longer project, for example, inside the company. And the third thing is the roaming users. Uh, these are not often often mentioned in this kind of uh, uh, authentication as a service uh, type type of services, but we are kind of uh, we are ha we have been doing so many EduRoam GoRoam integrations, so that we decided that we will also add support for this kind of roaming federations, roaming users that are that kind of users that uh, utilize their existing credentials to roam around in the networks that are connect connected to uh, a certain roaming federation. The first user group are the employees, contractor, and regular users. For them, Radiator Outdoor provides an easy way to uh, get self-service network access credentials for VPA2, VPA3 enterprise secured network. The kind of a uh, big idea here and the important design decision was that we wanted to kind of provide a separate network uh, access credentials for each users. This service is not connected to the active directory of the organization. 
Instead, uh, the, uh, all subcontractors employees are required to uh, uh, required to request a user account which is based on their email address in the organization. That can be something like first name, surname, at a domain, or it can be something like ex dash subcontractor name dot uh, company name there. The idea there is that this uh, kind of email address based username is unique for, for unique for the organization that it can be actually used for that that can be uh, used for verification of the user and also this kind of a validation that how long the user is able to utilize the company networks. How this actually works is the uh, uh, user will uh, go to the web page and enter their company 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 email address there the web page then sends a verification link to the user's email when the user follows the link the user gets a randomized password that is connected to that email address based user account this way the user cannot use this kind of a more secure password like Active Directory passwords because the user is not able, able to set the password themselves. Also because the password is uh, randomized, that password can be kept as it is for a longer period of time for this uh, longer period of time than this kind of Active Directory usernames that are rotated in something like uh, in the enterprises, something in like six or nine months there. And the uh, whole idea here is that for the for the devices, the user is actually using using to access the network. The, uh, the password can stay same for a far longer period. And so so uh, so will be the, also the username and uh, uh, this makes it mo far more usable to use this kind of user credentials for accessing that kind of a Wi-Fi network than just uh, uh, using something like Active Directory which is changing there. Usually using this kind of a, let's say more important credentials that creates of course the security risk that somebody could kind of a, a get the, uh, this kind of a more important username and password from the user with many man or person in the middle attacks or that that way uh, relying for example that the user has misconfigured their devices when the user is provided this kind of a separate user account and password that is not connected to the uh, active directory or more important user accounts that also that user account is not so uh, vulnerable even if it's kind of lost because of some configuration error by the user or if they provide that uh, username and passport for some what other uh, like a web page or some other uh, service there the uh, kind of functionality how this whole thing works and how the user gets the password it's uh, also kind of described in, in this uh, uh, picture here but I think most of these I already covered there the, I will just go uh, quickly through the whole uh, kind of setup there so the employee requests a Wi-Fi user account by entering their work email address on the web form and then the verification message is sent to the user and when the user follows follows the verification link the user verifies then the uh, uh, user account account there to the service the, uh, in, at the same time the, also the randomized password is revealed to the user and by using this uh, user uh, username and the password user is able to log in into the customer enterprise Wi-Fi and uh, as most of the devices remember those credentials the user is just kind of uh, automatically locked into network without having to ever authenticate again or verify their uh, access uh, 
at least for a while there. How this works when, when time goes on is that uh, there is a configurable uh, valid, validity time for the user account. It can be something like, for example, that six months, it can be two months, but whatever the organization wants it to be. And uh, within that time, the system sends this kind of a new verification message for the user that are you still using this user account. It is sent to that same email address that the user already had when they first verified the account. And if the user is not no longer with the organization, the user is not able to kind of verify that, yes, I am still using this. If the user is with the organization and have an active email address there, they can just kind of click the link and verify that I'm still using this username uh, for, for network access. And the password still stays the same. And this kind of removes the problem from the Wi-Fi networks that the users kind of uh, for, uh, get to kind of update their, update their username and passwords in their devices. And then their devices are kind of uh, trying to log into network with their wrong credentials, locking the users out of from, from their Active Directory accounts. If, for example, this username and password is uh, based on uh, Active Directory accounts. This is kind of a uh, problem that exists in large organizations like universities and organizations that the user just uh, kind of uh, for, forget to update uh, the password into the, their devices when they update that password into the university organization or their systems. And with this radiator out of the file, the username, the password stays the same, and the user is still able to use those uh, securely to log into network. We also uh, have done this kind of additional development for this service. And one thing what we have done is this uh, using client certificates for this kind of more secure authentication than the username passwords. This is something that we did in cooperation with uh, Tampere region cities and for, especially for their education sector where they wanted to have this kind of a more secure, more uh, ready to be used solution for authenticating all of those teacher, student, uh, workstation, tablets and all those things. So that the users wouldn't have to do anything to uh, get the device into connecting into Wi-Fi network. And that's why we, what we ended up in designing in connection to this service was this kind of optional add-on of having client certificates used for the authentication. This service works together with the certificate provisioning solutions and uh, public key infrastructures, such as, for example, Sketman, Microsoft Endes, Intune. Our Auto.defi service does not provide the certificate provisioning part of the service. We just provide the, uh, part of the service which uh, authenticates those devices with EAP TLS and against the radio servers, which are then coming from our service there. The only thing needed for this integration uh, from the radi radiator out of the FI services side are the PKC certificates, which the uh, services have been, ser have been using to sign those client certificates. So we only need those CA certificates that, ha uh, that have been used to sign those client certificates of the devices. We install them into our service, and then we can just authenticate any of these kind of a, a client certificate using devices with app TLS. We can do that kind of, a, a, let's say, deny listing of client certificates, for example, with separately configurable deny lists 
or just this kind of a regular X.509 uh, certificate revocation list that can be then used to limit device and people access to the network. For a user, this whole thing is uh, uh, completely transparent, in, at least in that case when it works. And uh, the idea is there that uh, the users, user's device is managed by the organization, the IT department, or then, for example, organization, some partner that is doing the IT department works. And uh, the configuration is first provisioned in the user device by something uh, some uh, provisioning service such as, for example, on-site Active Director, Intune, or Microsoft Endes, and that provides, a, the, provides to the device the Wi-Fi and the certificate configuration there. The device then uses this uh, SCEP protocol to request a certificate from the service and install, into, install that into device. And after that, the, you, the device already has the Wi-Fi configuration, and now that it ha already has a client certificate installed in the device, it can automatically log into customer enterprise Wi-Fi network without the uh, actual device user doing any, anything for this uh, whole functionality. And like a, in this kind of username password case, the device continues to log into network automatically, authenticate itself using client certificate. And at the same time, the device itself is kind of tracking that when it needs to remove the certificate from the uh, certificate provisioning service. The user doesn't have to do anything. They just open a laptop and it works in this kind of a network then. Other thing that uh, what our customers were interested in is this guest Wi-Fi access control. Radiator Outdoor TFI provides this kind of optional self-service guest Wi-Fi access solution. Uh, we have designed it so, we have implemented it so that it's now supports Cisco, Aruba, and we have also extreme network support in progress. Why there is kind of this, uh, support only for certain vendors is that this uh, guest Wi-Fi access control utilizes those uh, vendor devices support for captive portals and MAC address authentication. And when we are adding dev device vendors there, we need to always test and see that the integration with our service there works. The idea there is that the guest get an easy guest network access without having to have any kind of a username, password, any kind of that kind of vouchers, labels or uh, paper, paper slips where they would have the, something like username, password there. And most importantly, nobody from the, uh, whole, from the organization that is providing the guest network access needs to do anything for the guest, guest, uh, guest network to get that access. The uh, guests can just use this kind of self-service web service where they verify their uh, uh, email address or SMS number, phone number, and then they get an, uh, this kind of a div, uh, certain uh, kind of uh, access for a limited, limited time there. This can be something like 24 hours, it can be a few days, it can be a few hours, this is all all kind of configurable things in the service. Here is the actual flow of the uh, how how this uh, kind of guest uh, self-service uh, password guest Wi-Fi access works. So first, the user uh, joins the guest Wi-Fi with their device, and after that, it's kind of a um, familiar captive portal approach there so that the user's web browser is directed to a web page where the user is asked for their email address or phone number. 
the user then enters those details and the verification message is delivered via email or via SMS message to the user uh, user and the user needs to follow that link to verify their uh, credentials. After they have verified their credentials, uh, the user's device's MAC address is stored to the radio service and the, uh, on, on the, this kind of allow list. And then when user kind of continuous use, use the Wi-Fi, the user then uh, is a, able to use that without having to verify themselves anymore. The uh, wireless controller for the guest Wi-Fi is uh, checking periodically that if the uh, you user MAC address is still on the allow list and when the uh, time limit is, has been reached, the MAC address is kind of uh, uh, removed from the list and uh, after that the user needs, of course, verify again the uh, MAC address of their device by register by using that captive portal and that registration page there. We also provide the user uh, this kind of uh, uh, smaller time window to get into internet to, for example, verify from their email the verification link so, so that there is a possibility that the user gets uh, something like 15 minutes or half an hour access to the internet uh, without uh, the actual verification. But if they want to have that uh, time to access internet extended, then they will need to kind of verify their contact details by following that verification link. This is the kind of idea of uh, sufficient security for guest Wi-Fi access. This is not something that is used in in operator hotspot uh, uh, hotspot uh, access way. This is not kind of a commercial thing. This is more like a guest Wi-Fi access provided by a university or a company or some other organization, which just wants to control on a certain level that who is accessing their guest Wi-Fi, who is using their guest Wi-Fi and not just kind of provide a completely open, unauthenticated network for their guests. This can be a reason for this can be, for example, that they want to control the capacity, capacity that uh, not everyone is using uh, all of their guest Wi-Fi network capacity there just by joining the network. Or on the other hand, there is always this kind of a threshold when you give some contact details about you, you are not likely then to do anything, let's say, um, bad or abuse the network access because you have this kind of a, a nagging feeling that you have provided already some contact details for the, for the network access. So you know, so misbehaving in that network can kind of, a, can be tracked back to you there. Then the roaming users. Uh, if roaming is not familiar to you, roaming in Wi-Fi network means using your existing network credentials such as username and password to authenticate into some other organizations called roaming partners network. So you already have your home organization credentials or your home operator credentials. You just uh, use them and the network that is configured in, into your devices to access the same network with some other organizations uh, uh, place, but uh, using same configuration, same credentials. So like, like you would use, for example, mobile telephone in some other country when you are roaming there. And in this kind of a roaming user's use case, Radiator Auto Defi supports both the service provider and identity provider roles 
for this kind of radius-based roaming. An organization that is called to be in service provider role, that means that kind of organization that is only providing this uh, certain roaming network for those that already have credentials there. So they are not authenticating anybody. Instead, they are uh, proxying the authentication to into some other service, which then kind of uh, tells that if these users are allowed to use this network. This kind of uh, model is kind of common in that case, for example, where a city, city provides Eduroam edu network. That Eduroam network uh, works for any Eduroam with any organ, Eduroam organization credentials, but then the city may, may not have uh, credentials, for example, their employees to use the same network there. And that uh, uh, is what is called this kind of service provider role. The city is kind of providing the network uh, access, roaming network access to other roaming users, but they don't have the any identity database, any kind of user name, password, credentials themselves. If they want to be that kind of organization which is roaming, so that all, also the city credentials would work, that's called an identity provider role there. And the radiator auto defi supports both of these models if the uh, or customer organization wants to kind of connect into roaming federation as an identity provider or as a, as a service provider. Uh, we also uh, we set up this roaming connection to, to roaming federations kind of regionally because this is, for example, for Eduroam in uh, each country, there are Eduroam top level radio servers where the organizations that are joining to Eduroam Connect. And that's, that is also the kind of approach we are doing so that if there are customers in different countries that are uh, using our service, we will connect our service to the Eduroam top level servers. And then those organizations can connect to our serv uh, ser service, service, their Wi-Fi controllers. And they don't need to kind of uh, anymore have their own radio servers to connect, connect to the Eduroam there. We are kind of expanding, like, like I already kind of described, we are expanding this uh, regional event. There is kind of customer need for this. Uh, currently, we are uh, still operating in Finland, but we are kind of gradually expanding this when necessary. This kind of uh, basic support for Eduroam and the regional roaming federations such as Roam.fi, that is something that uh, we provide as part of the Radiator.fi base service. If a roaming federation requires their members to pay something for connecting, the, uh, connecting, the, connecting to the roaming federation, then of course that needs to be paid uh, in addition to our service, but this kind of basic connections to Eduroam and other radius roaming federations, if they are kind of free to do those, they are also part of our service without any additional cost there. We also may provide open roaming support connectivity in the future as an optional feature, but because in some cases open roaming requires organizations to pay a membership fees, we obviously need to do it so that this is a kind of optional add-on service that may cost some, something extra for the customers. For, for a, a user's point, point of view, this kind of a, a using this kind of a roaming network authentication, it's as easy as using your mobile phones there around the world. The idea is that when the device sees a suitable network, it tries to connect it automatically there and roam into utilizing those uh, users' home, uh, home uh, organization credentials. Here is the kind of uh, 
diagram about it. Uh, when the roaming users, they have already kind of entered their roaming credentials into their devices. The devices are constantly looking for that if there is a uh, network with certain name or network advertising certain roaming consortium organization identifiers in their uh, kind of Wi-Fi advertisements. If there is something like that around, the devices will try to join them, join those networks automatically, and then the controller there forwards the authentication request to our uh, radiator outdoor DeFi services radio service. If the uh, user credential used by the roaming users uh, belong to uh, that uh, same organization which network they are trying to access, then the authentication stops here and our radio service will respond that, okay, these are users of your organization, you can let them access the network. But if the users are from some different organization belonging to the roaming federation, then our service checks that if that uh, organization where the users belong is a, uh, our organization in the sense that it's uh, authenticated by our service. And if it's not, then the uh, request is forwarded forward to the roaming federation top level servers called roaming federation proxies. These uh, after that kind of uh, uh, know where, where different organizations are authenticated will send that request to that home, those, uh, those roaming users home organization, which will then respond back to the roaming federation proxies that if the users are still active and allowed to access the network and the whole uh, kind of uh, reply to the request to access network is then uh, forwarded back through the same channel, same servers to the wireless controller, which then uh, either allows or denies access for the users to the network. The users don't see the complexity of this kind of uh, net network uh, access. They just uh, see that their devices will automatically connect or not in the net network. They are kind of uh, uh, see, seeing their, seeing their uh, in the list of Wi-Fi networks. The users don't have to do anything for it. The roaming is uh, kind of automatic thing, like, like the mobile telephone roaming example I told earlier. What our radiator outdoor device service provides is the summary of those is that we provide this kind of self-service permanent Wi-Fi user account registration and verification service as a, a part of our base service. This means that this uh, so this kind of self-service uh, thing here is uh, intended for those uh, regular users, employees, and subcontractors that are using that email user address based user credential and then getting the passport on the system and uh, using those to access this VPA2, VPA3 enterprise Wi-Fi networks. Radiator Autotify provides that radius authentication service for this and the only thing needed from the customer is this VPA2, VPA3 enterprise capable Wi-Fi controllers, uh, access points and that kind of hardware. We also provide this kind of optional self-service uh, passwordless guest Wi-Fi network authentication service for those uh, uh, guest users who don't uh, have access to credentials that could be used for registering, registering the, uh, this kind of uh, permanent or semi-permanent Wi-Fi user accounts there, but are this kind of uh, users that need that network access for a shorter time there. And as the described also earlier, our auto DeFi service supports this kind of optional X.509 client certificate authentication and authenticating that especially with FTLS with radius and for this VPA2, VPA3 enterprise Wi-Fi networks. Our service is compatible 
with any radius uh, uh, radius roaming federations and it can be used for service provider or identity provider functionality depending of the roaming depending of uh, which roaming federation is in question the roaming federation may have some charges for membership of belonging that uh, roaming federation and that is of course kind of additional cost for the organizations voting to join to that uh, roaming federation also based on the interest customer interest we are looking uh, to provide we this wireless broadband alliance open roaming compatible settlement free service provider uh, functionality to kind of create this kind of easy self-service VPA2, VPA3, enterprise Wi-Fi network access. And uh, if there is also kind of customer demand interest for it, we are also planning to provide the identity provider functionality for this same open roaming network, but uh, kind of uh, focusing into that kind of approach that we are doing this uh, settlement free type, type of uh, roaming access, which means that there isn't this kind of uh, uh, roaming charges between organizations. Instead, it's this kind of a free to use roaming where the organizations are able to roam different open roaming federation networks uh, for, for the uh, fee that is the membership fee of uh, belonging to this open roaming federation. In open roaming, there is also a service provider model where there is this kind of a uh, roaming broker functionality, there are settlements, there are money exchanging, um, exchanging uh, between organizations for this Wi-Fi roaming access. And that is, uh, that is something that we we'll, uh, kind of uh, have uh, limited outside of the scope of this service because there is already uh, companies that are providing this more more like a commercial operator type of services. There are, for example, single tickets. There are um, there are others, uh, Boingo, and so on, who are providing this kind of operator services. And with this, with this radiator out of the fire service, we are focusing into companies, organization who just want to get this VPA2, VPA3 their guest networks, their roaming access, uh, just, to, just to work and do not kind of uh, want to uh, maintain radio service, configure them themselves. The uh, whole radiator outdoor DeFi was designed based on our experiences in deploying radiator for Wi-Fi authentication and for Wi-Fi wi 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 roaming for many organizations around the world. We have also been running and maintaining Eduroam national proxies since 2004 in Finland and also this kind of ro uh, regional roaming federations like Rome.fi. And we have seen from this, uh, run, when we have run these services, we have seen that uh, what are the problems the organizations usually uh, face face when they are trying to kind of set up these services themselves or try to configure their uh, own servers to connect to these federations and we just wanted to kind of uh, uh, get rid of these kind of problems the, the organization could just take our service take our authentication um, authentication solution and they wouldn't have to kind of learn how to run radius radio service or configure or maintain them, those themselves. The service is kind of intended to make it easy just to deploy this kind of enterprise level Wi-Fi authentication, even with roaming and guest Wi-Fi included for so, such organizations that are not kind of willing to invest uh, a lot, lot of money into design, deploying and maintaining these same services themselves. For an operator, like a commercial operator, like an internet service provider or such thing, or then an integrator selling network devices, this service kind of complements their uh, 
solution, the, their products, their business in the sense that uh, operator or integrator doesn't have to kind of provide the, this kind of a Wi-Fi authentication service. They can provide the uh, design of the Wi-Fi network. They can provide the network uh, equipment, equipment there. They can uh, provide the network, internet uh, bandwidth, network access, all that kind of thing as a service. And in addition, they can provide our uh, authentication service as this kind of solution, which then handles the actual authentication to this uh, Wi-Fi networks there. For this kind of large scale uh, Wi-Fi network business, so being like a Wi-Fi network service operator or commercial, commercial operator, we uh, look looking for that kind of solution like white label networks, uh, commercial hotspot, uh, billing, captive portals, and such things. We recommend uh, that uh, utilizing radiator and radiator expert services and building their own solution for providing this kind of service because with the radiator the auto, uh, radiator out.fi, we are focusing into that, that we provide this as a service for those companies, organizations, and as a complementing service for a network integrator or operator. But we are not kind of a build building this kind of a operator, operator type, type of infrastructure where uh, the Wi-Fi is monetized there. That is something that is best done with our uh, uh, radiator products combined with our expert services so that the uh, servers and the infrastructure is built according to the customer requirements and we can then discuss the different monetiz monetization models for this kind of a Wi-Fi uh, network service provider business there. But that's uh, all I have about the Radiator Outdoor service. If you have any questions or you want to learn more, we have here the Radiator Software blog. We have a uh, some social media links like Twitter, slides there. But if you, if you just want to have a, a conference call about your needs and how you would like to utilize Radiator Outdoor or discuss those kind of options for utilizing radiator and radiator expert services for this kind of building Wi-Fi service offering. There is a contact details there on the slide. I now thank you for your attention. And we'll end this presentation.